Now I want to come in with as little fuel as possible here. So what I'm going to do is uh, 50. No, I kind of want like 100. Uh, no, I want less than 100. I want like 60. Let's go 60,000. Okay. Well, too much. <laughs> they overdid it. They overcooked it. Okay, let's do this again. It, uh, 70, 60... Oh gosh, dang it! It's it's so sensitive once you get into those numbers. Okay, barely barely any throttle this time, guys. Perfect. So, quick save. Uh, we're going to zoom in and hit our periapsis. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip around uh, once we get a little closer here. Uh, don't want to overdo it. Really don't want to overdo it. Okay. Uh, maybe like three notches. Four. Going as much as I can. Okay, cool. So I am now facing... I just realized something. Can I get out of my map? Will it... Oh, 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 the frame rate. There it goes. Okay. Let's turn off the lights first of all. And let's pull up my gears. Now, I said this before, I don't know if this thing is going to survive re-entry. We're going to try, though, and it's going to be freaking awesome. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to burn off the rest of my fuel. I know this, this, I don't know why this is so inaccurate compared to, eh, kind of like left, right, left. I guess it's kind of accurate, but, you know, the idea behind it is that I, I still have quite a bit of fuel left in me. So I'm trying to get rid of it, because otherwise this may be a very... Uh, dangerous and painful re-entry here so I am increasing in altitude that's fine no problem there but I'm just gonna burn off the rest of my fuel once I get down to like 10 fuel left on this five I think five will be good we'll go to our apoapsis and we'll get our periapsis further within the uh, the atmosphere. So 70, 60, 50. That's burning a little faster. 40, 30, 20. Okay, so here's where I want to be kind of precise with it. At about 5. 7, 6, 5. Perfect. Uh, and now I'm going to flip myself prograde. And we will get to our apoapsis. And from there, what I will do is, I like the glow kind of like coming off the planet. Ooh, this pack, man, it makes the game look a lot better. It's a renaissance pack, renaissance, uh, if you're from anywhere other than good old Merca. And with the last bit of fuel, this will put us into like the 40s or 50s, roughly, hopefully the 50s. And that will slow us down even more. Honestly, what I could do is I could just keep going around and around and around. And eventually I would slow down enough because I'm, I am getting atmospheric uh, drag there. Okay, so we're at 61. A full burn puts us at 40. Perfect. Perfect. We're going to quick save now. We're going to flip prograde because that will set us retrograde when we get to the other side physics that's how that works and when we re-enter we have no fuel which is what i needed and hopefully our <laughs> hopefully our rover doesn't just fly off in a blaze of glory because that would that would suck honestly oh i really need uh no i'm gonna be i'm gonna be facing retrograde when i get to my periapsis because that that rover costs a lot of money no joke so we want to make sure that we can bring back as much of it as possible. I just realized I probably should fix the clouds. I think there's two layers of clouds going on because of two mods installed. Nah, I'll, I'll deal with that later. For now, we have two types of clouds on Kerbin. Uh, it's obviously a, a scientific phenomenon, and many of the uh, Kerbals are studying the, the pressure data of Kerbin. Uh, more so than they are the pressure data of other planets, which 
makes the Synethians mad. Look, that's how I'm explaining the fact that I have a double mod installed. Also, you'll notice uh, my periapsis, while going down, I'm reaching it, right? Now, once I hit, like, uh, what am I at now? I'm at 38,000. Okay, so once I hit, like, 30, I'll begin slowing down a lot. But you'll see my apoapsis. It's, it's gonna, by the time I hit my periapsis, which I won't, I think my periapsis will stay ahead of me, my apoapsis will be well below 70. Yeah, I'm not gonna reach my periapsis. So now we've, we've slowed built beyond uh, return, right? So my periapsis is gonna remain there until I slow down to the point where it's just gonna, uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna go well ahead of me. The apoapsis no longer should exist. The apoapsis will become the periapsis because the periapsis will be my, uh, what, well, what is now my periapsis will be my apoapsis because it will then be the highest point. And all of that explaining just to see that happen. So there you go. It's really simple, right? It's not too complex, uh, but now that we're kind of skimming, this is this is a conservative re-entry, and I, I really haven't done a conservative re-entry. Usually I just go at it the first time, and I will, uh, I'll do my best to come in kind of at a, uh, not a steep angle, but a relative, you know, parabolica coming back into the planet. But the problem is uh, with this, I have... I just I don't want to destroy this thing so I'm being really careful here so if you ever have like a massive spaceship with a lot of parts and you don't want it falling apart when you're re-entering the, the atmosphere do something like this where you're you know you're gently coming back in you're letting the planet kind of like slowly give you a hug right I know that's a weird thing to visualize but that's that's how we're doing it uh, it's it's a it's a good way to visualize it actually because it's it's gentle and it's, it's as if the planet is welcoming me back with all of the juicy science. All right, moment of truth. How many parts do you think are going to fly off this rover? I think the wheels will be fine. They're typically pretty strong. But I think these will, will just fly right off. I'm not sure about the tanks. I think the tanks will be fine. Maybe some of the solar panels. The bottom should shield it a bit. That's why we have that thing there, aside from you know dragging it across the ground. That's another reason why we... Uh, put that little shield on the bottom. Honestly, it's just an adapter. I'll even... Oh, it won't let me right-click on it. It's just an adapter is all it is, so that uh, helps a bit. Can I... Uh, I was going to fill the hard drive, but then I realized there's nothing to fill it with. And we've done a pretty good job of, of consolidating our science, so that way it's kind of all in one spot. Wow, this re-entry. There's a lot of parts that are being affected by by physics here so my frame rate is just dead is dead but that is fine i'd probably should oh no okay hit the parachutes okay that that saved me from just spinning out of control and in fact i think that's the only thing that saved me from spinning out of control it appears that because of the rover's position it's created some weird amounts of drag and that has slowed me down at a weird angle, which is why it wanted to spin. So there you go, the more you know. I turn SAS off and we will see exactly what is happening. Yeah, it's got it's got this weird weight spin on it. It's I don't know what exactly is going on there. Are we gonna land in the ocean? Uh that may not be good for us. The poor rover. Oh yeah, there is there's some weird uh weight issues here with how this thing wants to function uh let's uh, it doesn't want to go retrograde oh i'm like holding the button and just willing it to go that way let's put our gear out that will actually kind of soften the the water blow to the bottom of this thing i'm just a little surprised uh about the fact that it's so wonky it's it's really weird it's that weight distribution that is just kind of funky. I mean, the, the rover itself is quite heavy, and the fact that we don't have any fuel anymore has really offset the whole thing, uh, especially fuel in the middle tank. That was really what was giving us most of our mass on the science vessel. Okay, well, we're just going to hope for the best here. Uh, ooh, I want to try to come in as straight up and down as possible. Why haven't my parachutes deployed yet? There they go. Ooh, that almost just ripped off the rover. Uh, much better. Okay, I, I can I can handle this. Let's let's go down. 
All right, like usual, I need to be quick on the recover vehicle. Uh, don't blow up, don't blow up, don't blow up. Okay, okay, uh, recover. Wait, hey, re I think it just took me back to the space. <laughs> I don't think it recovered it. Did it? Uh, no, dang it. <laughs> that space center button, it's such a tease. Okay, recover. Give me all that. Oh, 5,000 science. 5,682. Oh, and I got a lot of money back. Holy cow. I mean, that, the science vessel itself is expensive, plus the rover. That doesn't help, but holy cow, that was, that was a lot of science. And then we got this. That was the moon, so we're up to over 5,000 science gained out of that one mission, which was really kind of good. Okay, I have, I have a few options here. But uh, what I really need to do is I need to purchase this and this. That's for our stuff later on. Don't don't you don't you get ahead of me now. And I want this fairing. And what is that? It's an electromagnet. That's for grabbing things apparently. Oh, literally we have we have unlocked the entire tech tree. Well, that was anticlimactic. I was expecting a little bit more. Uh, yeah, there's some really cool parts there, and we have our awesome reactor, but we're not quite done yet. I thought I got rid of that. Get, 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 get out of here. Let's check out what they gave us. <laughs> analyze the surface composition of Kerbin. Uh, analyze the surface composition of Duna. Rescue some poor guy from Kerbin. Yeah, they, they didn't really give us a ton of new missions however it's not like we need them I, we are going to need the money i gotta keep that in mind is there anything in here that just gives me an absurd amount of money because i don't need science anymore so i need to go no that's not the this building okay uh i need to cancel that strategy yes i need to cancel this strategy yes and i'm gonna i'm gonna find a good balance later on about uh, you know, like the amount of money that I make versus the amount of, you know, whatever that I'm recovering or anything like that. Uh, but w we have all those new parts. So let me show you them real quick because you're going to, you're going to see some cool stuff coming up here, but uh, sure. Let's just, that's not a new part, but let's just grab this so I can actually show you uh, propulsion. And it, it actually, not science utility right yeah it's the first one utility here's our reactor yeah that's pretty cool right and propulsion that's the drive oh that's one drive i'm gonna have like three or four of those on a spaceship so it's gonna be freaking awesome when we finally get that done but i figured i'd actually give you an idea of what we just unlocked it is super cool uh i have i have a lot of plans for that with that, I need to uh, make sure that I got everything else. Okay. I wanted to mention that the reason I haven't started doing some of the colonization stuff is because the mod is really broken for me. I'm I'm working on that. Uh, hopefully, in the next couple episodes, we'll be able to start colonizing the moon and getting a mission set up there. That kind of uh, determines or is determined by the state of curb uh curb yeah kerbal space program in the next couple weeks because if the new patch comes out then the chances are it's not going to get fixed uh if the new patch doesn't come out then i'll be able to fix it but i need to stop rambling and actually get my other mission set up before we get our main things because we need to start testing some space planes right because if we're going to have a giant freaking spaceship being worked on, we need a way of getting to it. Because a giant freaking spaceship is not something that you're constantly bringing in and out of an atmosphere. You keep it in orbit. So, we're going to get it into orbit once. We're going to fuel the thing way up. We got to make a, a space, uh, not a space satellite, but a space base. 
in which we can refuel the thing when it comes back to Kerbin. And we need to make interceptors for it. We need to make uh, things that, that sit within its cargo bay and that cargo bay then uh, houses, you know, science vessels and stuff and takes those science vessels to different planets and those science vessels then explore those planets, right? That's the plan. That's what we're going to do. And that is... Yeah, that's the first step. So what I need to do is I need to start testing some of those. So I think uh, I think I'm gonna build one real quick, test it out, and then try my other models. I think that's the goal. We need to find something that's incredibly stable and that can fit within a cargo bay. It's a lot harder than you think it might be. 